Today, I want to give you my five favorite productivity hacks with maybe a few honorable mentions that'll make you a better physician and a better entrepreneur on this episode of Bootstrap MD. Hey guys, it's Dr. Mike Wu Ming. Welcome to another edition of Bootstrap MD. If this is your first time listening or watching, this is a podcast for physician entrepreneurs, and I'm so glad that you're able to join us today. And today I want to give you my five favorite productivity hacks uh, that'll make you more efficient on your time and let you become just a more productive, efficient person. And I've pretty much been obsessed with productivity. I think it goes back to college, but certainly mostly in medical school, you know, where we get all this information and how we're gonna gather all this information and then <laughs> regurgitate it back for tests and just identifying those time vampires in our life that are sucking away um, our precious time, which of course, we all have 24 hours a day, seven days out of the week, and what's the best way that we can use it. Now, sometimes when you look at time efficiency methods, you know, they focus on just getting things getting things done like the, the book says by David Allen, but they oftentimes they take it to the extreme. They like they record everything about their day from the morning that they wake up to when they go to bed. And the way the reason why I focus on time efficiency is understanding that if I'm more efficient with my time in terms of my work, I can now devote it to the areas of my life where I want time to be uh, used more, uh, for more. So more time with my family, more time with my friends, just leisure time, things that I enjoy, hobbies, etc. So that's what I want to give you guys today. Um, I've always got questions either from students or people who DM me on Facebook, you know, that they can't even manage just one business. How do you manage multiple businesses, uh, multiple employees, all these different tasks that are going around. And I think the first part is ensuring that you're building a great team. And, you know, I'm not seeing every single patient. I'm not signing every document. I'm doing the things that as I've taught you is to start thinking like a CEO and then helping manage manage your own life and becoming the CEO of your own life. And I've, I've talked that on previous podcast episodes. And the other thing that I want to share with you is many of you are doing activities that I'm just going to be straight out to it. You're doing activities and work that you could hire somebody for minimum wage to do. And don't, <laughs> you look at me funny because you know who you are if, you, if you're out there and, and if you're being out there and you're performing activities that you could hire somebody in college or a family member or get somebody on uh, Craigslist or on Indeed and have them do the work. It's gonna allow you to become a better entrepreneur. I've had a personal assistant for going on, geez, what is that, 12, 13 years now, and it changed my life. And I know what you're thinking, I can't afford to hire a assistant, it's too expensive. I would argue that after listening to this, you'll find out that it is costing you more than, than not having an assistant. So, hope you get a lot out of this, and let's get started, I'll, let's go over my top five productivity hacks. And these are in no particular order. So the first one is I use the Pomodoro method in almost everything that I do for work. So what is the Pomodoro method? It's understanding that a typical human, we have the attention span of, you know, a hummingbird. You know, we're always going into something different, especially in this era of the internet and really being time distracted by all of these different sites and reading different articles 
and then you end up going into that rabbit hole and then you can never get out of. And so what I use is the Pomodoro method, which is the understanding that because our attention spans are so small, we need to have a specific amount of time of deep focus, deep concentration, and then follow that up by a few minutes of relaxation or being able to take a break. Now, what the Pomodoro method is that I use is there's different types of time that you can do. Some do like 10 minutes on and then two minutes of taking a break. I prefer to do 50 minutes of deep focus time, whether I'm working on, you know, I'm writing an article uh, for a publication or I'm, you know, working on some medical cases for my clinic or um, any activity where I need some deep focus, I use that. And usually, what I usually do is I do 50 minutes of that type of work and then 10 minutes of taking a break. And then 10 minutes is being able to step away from the computer or wherever you're, you're working, uh, you know, taking a walk, um, maybe watching a few funny YouTube videos. But then after you have that break, going back right to it. Some do, as I said, 10 minutes and two on. Some do 25 minutes and, and five minute breaks. And the idea is that, that that time frame, this idea of having that focus time with a small amount of relaxation time is what they define as a Pomodoro. And the idea is that how many Pomodoros can you do in a day? And, you know, four or five, you'll find out that you're going to be more, be more productive because you're able to step away and have that relaxation time. So I just use a timer. My favorite is egg timer. Uh, dot com and uh, or yeah e.ggtimer.com is one but you can use any type of timer you can even find pomodoro timer timers pomodoro timers on, on amazon if you want or use them on, if you have special apps that you can use on the phone most of them are completely free whatever it is um, some of you are probably already familiar with this um, as i know as someone who's gone through medical school, you know, you all know about time efficiency, but that's number one for me. Number two, use these technological delivery services as much as possible for doing the things that you don't like to do. So last week was a big deal for me is I went to Costco for the first time in probably three or four years. Now that might not seem like a big deal to you, but I've had a Costco cart for forever, <laughs> you know. But a little confession is I hate going to shop physically, like going into an actual physical shop. Now, I love Amazon. I have Amazon drivers come to my house almost every other day. They hate us because we've got this long driveway and they have to back up all the way down. But I hate going to actual stores and with the uh, pandemic, you know, it's kind of a had an excuse not to go, go to those. And, and the thing is, is that my wife, she loves to physically shop on there. And she kind of guilted me that I haven't gone for forever. So I went uh, for the first time. But since the pandemic, you know, I hate to say that there were some benefits to the pandemic. But let's just say that there was opportunities that I learned. And for, for us, it was taking advantage of uh, the services uh, that shop, grocery shop for you, that, that you can you do from your phone. And that's what we were doing in our area. It's instacart.com, uh, where we live. Might be different from for where you are. And that was like a game changer for, for me in terms of uh, the ability to have somebody to shop for us. And then you can choose what you want and not compare shop. And that for me is what was amazing to me. Now, if you like to do those to, sh to shop like my wife, then then go for it. Um, but, you know, just taking advantage of these services, these food delivery services, you know, getting these prepared meals uh, sent to you or the ingredients of all like from HelloFresh, it has been amazing. Now, like I said, if you like doing those things then continue, continue doing it. But I want you to get out of the habit of doing service again, as I mentioned at the beginning, that you can hire somebody to do those for you. What is the best use of your time? You know, if, 
I teach you guys that you need to become the CEO of your life, the CEO generally isn't going and shopping for various items unless they love to do it. So that was a big th deal for me and just wanted to share it with you. Remember when you could practice medicine on your own terms? What if you could take control of your physician career, make more money while working smarter, not harder? Pick up your copy of The Positioned Physician. Earn more, work smart, and love medicine again. Now updated for 2021, The Positioned Physician details one doctor's journey from burnt out employee to successful entrepreneur. Whether you are in residency, in mid-career, or close to retirement, after reading The Positioned Physician, you'll gain the knowledge that can strategically impact your doctor life. The Positioned Physician, now available on Amazon Kindle and paperback. Number three, utilizing Apple Notes. Now, when I had a, an idea, a business idea, idea for a product, whatever, something that I needed to do, I would carry around a, a moleskin planner, a little physical book planner, and I would write down my ideas so on things I didn't want to forget. The problem is, is I would misplace it or I would leave it at, at uh, my work office and would forget it, and then I'd have to write it on a piece of paper, and it was just getting a, a little bit crazy. And I've always been a person who loves, you know, yellow pads, writing things down. Um, it helped me in memorizing stuff in, in medical, medical school, just writing things down, highlighting that kind of thing. That's the way my, my brain works. But the reason why I used Apple Notes is because in my life, I use a lot of Apple products. Usually I have my iPhone, I have a, an iPad, uh, that I use mostly a lot now. I've been using my iPad a lot more and a MacBook Pro. And now if I want to uh, write chop something down, I use my Apple Pen and I can write it on my iPad or I can just, you know, type it on my phone using my Apple Notes. And because I'm in this Apple ecosystem, if a note is written on my phone, it also gets on my, my MacBook, it also gets on my iPad. And then if, if I don't have my phone with me for some reason and I, in front of my laptop, I can then access those notes. And again, another game changer for me. And now I feel like what I want to utilize my note system for is to be a second brain for me. Because again, as we get older, the memory starts to not work as well. Um, it's not perfect by any means. And if you're a PC person, uh, I don't know what it would be the equivalent that or that would be, but I guess Evernote would I guess would be another way, you know, a web-based system. Just you want to find something that you can use over different platforms. It's not perfect by any means. Um, there are some things that I've been researching now uh, using uh, backlinks, using notes with that that have links uh, in between them. Um, I think uh, a software out there that you may want to check out is called Obsidian, which basically the concept is, is when you've got different notes, if you're trying to create it so it can become your second brain, the way that we have, we're taking concepts, we link different concepts to it. And you need to be able to have a way to interlink different types of notes. It's difficult to kind of explain but I invite you to check out the software. I'll give you a link to it. I think it has a lot of very cool ramifications um, that, especially in medicine, if you're someone who may be listening to this in medical school and you have like different concepts, you know, the way that we, we learn is we'll learn like, let's say the cranial nerves. And later on, we, our brain is trying to connect it with different, you know, areas. So if you've got a deficiency in cranial nerves, what does that mean if you've got a Bell's palsy, as an example? Um, and the ability to connect all these different items that can be interlinked. And what I love about the software is it has like a graphical interface. So I'm kind of going um, a little bit on the tangent. I think that's where the next step is. If Apple Notes does inc incorporate some type of linking system, that'd be amazing. But for me, it's been working extremely well. Number four is utilizing apps that eliminate faxes. If you've been listening to my program for a while, you know 
I hate the fax machine with the intensity of a thousand suns, and it drives me nuts that it's still incorporated in medicine. You know, if you're gonna, if you want to get me riled up, and I don't get riled up a lot, is is if you want me to fax you something, uh, because <laughs> it just drives me crazy why it's still being utilized. But that is until I found software that allows me to eliminate this. So, you know, I have a fax machine in our office because there's still, you know, uh, times when we need to fax things, medical records. But we use now, you, we're utilizing more now is the e-fax, an e-fax number, which you can get for free through Doximity, as many of you know. So if somebody wants to fax, basically what they're doing is they're just scanning a document to, to us. And the way that I, I would have to do it the old way was if I wanted to get something Let's say they wanted me to, to sign something and fax them back. I would have to, you know, get the document. And it was most likely it was emailed to us. Or if it was faxed to us, we would have to scan it in. Or get that, get that printed out, document printed out. I would have to physically sign it. Get that document scanned in and then sent. And it was so annoying. Now, using software, the one that I use is Notability, and again, nothing special about that software, but it's a Mac product, um, and is using some type of software that allow you to um, use uh, a signature and getting that submitted. So I use, again, this is not a commercial for Apple, but I have an Apple pen. So if I get a document and it's in my email and I need to sign it, I just take the software, I upload it to this Notability, I sign it using my Apple Pen on my, on my iPad, and then it gets, I just send it right back, eliminating all of the printer. It may not sound like a big deal, but it's a big deal for me. You know, again, I manage a lot of different clinics. There's things that I have to sign, like sign. Um, they don't want to use like DocuSign or anything like that. And uh, it's a lot easier to do, and I, I totally avoid using printers, which their technology hasn't like improved in the last 20 years anyways. Okay, before I get to the fifth productivity hack, I want to go over a few honorable mentions. These are things that I've mentioned on past podcasts. I didn't think any of them were earth shattering, but you may get some benefit. I didn't think it reached the, the top five of my favorite productivity hacks, but it could be useful to you. Um, you know, I use audible.com. I love audiobooks if I have to drive, you know, somewhere. The best thing that you can do is, is understanding that when you're driving, use that time uh, to educate yourself, you know, use different audiobooks. I love doing that. I love, you know, watching YouTube videos. I'll download like certain YouTube videos using my Audible, but I, but I, well, I do so and I make sure that I, I put it at like a 1.25, 1.5. Sometimes, if I'm really in an area where I can concentrate, you know, 1.75 to 2 speed, again, saves you a lot of time and you'll still be able to comprehend that. Uh, another honorable mention is, you know, I use a lot of, uh, I love Kindle books. I have the Kindle Unlimited. You can get books, uh, you know, for, I think it was like $9.99 a month, unlimited Kindle books. They give you a 10 at a time. But another way, if you're, you don't want to spend money for a uh, digital ebook membership, is your local library will have will give you free access to free ebooks, uh, and they usually have many of the books that I find in, in Kindle. Um, I use one called Hoopla that does well. They not only have ebooks. Uh, I'm a comic book nut. They've got graphic novels. And they've got audiobooks as well. So go to your local library, um, you know, support them, and uh, realize that many of them have these type of subscriptions that, that you can that you can use for free. Uh, another one is I password. You know, I've been hacked so many times uh, because I've usually use dumb passwords. Right? We all know, you know, password one or one two three four. Now I use a password protection site, so I just have to remember one main password, 
And uh, you know, we're in the age of hackers. Unfortunately, you need to be able to protect yourself. You're never going to remember these passwords. So now I have these long 12 to 16 digit passwords using a password protection. LastPass is one. There's many others that you can use. And uh, yeah, so those are some honorable mentions I wanted to share with you guys. Okay, my last productivity hack I want to share with you, I've used for decades. And that is doing a monthly and weekly brain dump. Monthly and weekly brain dump. Now, ep in episode 80, I talked about my goal, my goal method, my getting gold method called the GG6 method to helping you get attain anything that you want. And when you're using, thinking about goals, the, way, the best way to really hone your, my system, hone that system, is to utilize a weekly and monthly brain dump that I wanted to share with you guys. So if you missed this, go back. It's on episode number 80. I think you, you'll enjoy it. But I utilize a brain dump every, for me, every Sunday, where I just basically need to think about all the things that I need to do for the week or for the month. Um, just takes no longer than, it takes me about an hour and it's basically everything that you need to do that's in your head you want to get down on, on paper. So what I do is I take a yellow pad, take a yellow pad, and then I write down everything that I need to do, you know, for the week or for the month. And I, I re and what I do for me is, if you've never done this before, I would say just like writing it down and, and not stopping, just writing it down, everything that you need to do. And not just for work, not just for your business, in life. If you've got to change the light bulb uh, in, the, in the bedroom, if you've got to take your dog to the dog room or whatever, write that down. Um, and I would just write everything down. For me, I put them in different categories. You know, one could be for family, one could be for finance, personal finances, one could be for health, one could be for your own business, whatever that is. If you've never done one of these brain notes before, I just wanted you to free think. And it could be anything. It could be like, I need to remember, uh, you know, someone's birthday next month, whatever that is. The idea is that your brain um, has all these different things in your head. And for me, having it written down in paper, it makes me less anxious because I know that I've documented it somehow. So do this. Again, take, usually take about 10 or 15 minutes. And so I've got all these tasks written down on my yellow pad. What I do then is I use my favorite task management software. Uh, it could be, I'm using Pass Todoist, I've used Toodledo, um, others are like Remember the Milk, others are like Things 3. Uh, my favorite right now is Amazing Marvin, but whatever you use. I then take all these different tasks and then I prioritize on it. Um, usually on a scale, I've got a scale, a starred system, but you want to do things that you know are going to have the biggest impact to you. What is the, what are the biggest? What are these tasks are moving you forward? You know what are these tasks where we can then delegate it to others? If, again, I don't want to rehash uh, things that have already been utilized, like getting things done by David Allen. There's different ways that you can prioritize. I like to focus on activities that are going to make the biggest impact, and then find activities where I can delegate it to somebody else. You know, if I find that we need to get eggs, I can just put that on the list and then I can have Instacart take care of that. So I use Amazing Marvin and reason one of the reasons I like that one is it integrates with my Google Calendar because when I take those tasks, I find out which ones have the, the biggest impact, which ones are the most urgent that I need to be completed, and then I, I make sure that I put a deadline to it uh, and then I put then have it on my Google Calendar and I basically schedule that task uh, for that week or for that for that time. So that's I know I use the word game changers a lot, and I gotta stop myself from using that. But that certainly was. It's allowed me to become better organized and become a better entrepreneur. So I hope you learned a few things. Some of them maybe you've done before. Some may be new. Uh, but for me, this is what works for me, and that's what I can share with you today. But again. If you have your favorite productivity hacks, I'd love to hear about it. Just drop me a line. Now, again, I want to reiterate that you're doing these 
time efficient methods, not just, just to manage time, it's to use that time so you can spend the time that you, they'll help you become um, not only better entrepreneur, helping you be, to have your ideal life, spending the time where you that you enjoy, time for your hobbies, time for your families, time for your friends, time just that makes life, you know, just the, the, the aspects of life that, that we love. And that's what I want you to, to focus on. So I uh, hope you like it. Um, and again, if you have your favorite, let me know. Until then, guys, whatever you do, just don't get into paralysis analysis. If you want to live your ideal life, you have to do things to get you to that place. And it starts by keep moving forward. Hey, Dr. Mike Luming with Bootstrap MD. Thanks for listening to the program. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I encourage you to go and please leave and, and rate or review this podcast to wherever you're listening to it. It really helps me out and it really helps me spread the benefits of physician entrepreneurship. Really appreciate it. And thanks again for listening. Thank you.